Fox Newsmaker Saturday starts now. She is the 61st mayor of the city of Phoenix. She is also the youngest uh, mayor of the 10 largest U.S. cities. And she was, for a brief time, the only woman who was the mayor of those 10 largest cities. But now, Lori Lightfoot, of course, becoming the mayor of Chicago. She joins you. Kate Gallego is our guest on Newsmaker Saturday. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. I, I really want to take a few minutes to let people get to know you, mm -hmm. who you are, where you came from. Your family was from Chicago. My parents were living out there until the blizzard of 79. They didn't like the idea of snow skiing to work. So right. they, they took out a map of the United States where every state was a puzzle piece, and they took turns throwing out states. So my dad immediately threw out Illinois because of the blizzard. Right. Uh, my mom threw out the state where my gr her father's parents lived, and we got down to Arizona and New Mexico. They ultimately picked New Mexico. Now, why New Mexico over Arizona? They actually were uh, concerned a little bit about infrastructure investments in Arizona and our school system. No kidding, which mm -hmm. still holds today. That's a concern that even the governor has identified as trying to bring businesses in here. We need a better school system. As a parent of a young person, I would love to see more investments in education. It is the future of our city and of each of our families. This, you're speaking of the little guy who doesn't mm -hmm. like to eat vegetables. Yes, and he still doesn't and like to eat vegetables. He doesn't? You haven't been able to get through to him? No, I sometimes feel like, you know, there's those old stories about people trying to hide food to poison a king. <laughs> I make that same level of effort to try to get vegetables into my okay, son. Okay, so you weren't able, despite all of this, mm -hmm. uh, is this a genetic thing? You don't so like I'll him either? I'll confess, now that the campaign is over, I am also not a fan of broccoli. Okay, so this is true. This but I is do reality. like vegetables generally, but okay. with broccoli, I, I'll... So you end up in, in, in Albuquerque. You're mm -hmm. growing up. You're, you're obviously a good student because you end up at Harvard. Are I you studied in, hard. Are you in student council and doing all that stuff as a kid? I was early on a Girl Scout, and that is apparently true of many of the women, a majority who run for public office. So I went door-to-door -door selling Girl Scout cookies, and then a few decades later, door-to-door -door introducing myself to voters. And when you went to Harvard, mm -hmm. you went on scholarship? I did. So as we discussed... But I, I, um, well, if you've read my financial disclosures, you'll know until quite recently I had a lot of student loans. You did, because I was going to get into that. I mean, mm -hmm. this, is, this is another issue that now as a politician, it's not necessarily something you deal with directly as a mayor of the city of Phoenix, but it is an issue we're all grappling with. Absolutely. And you were saddled with it. Mm -hmm. And it does restrict career choices and options. So then you moved to Arizona after Harvard? I did. Business degree? So I have an MBA from the University of Pennsylvania. Okay. I actually did an executive MBA, which means I was working the whole time and did it on the weekends. What were you doing at that time? I spent about a decade working at the Salt River Project. This explains your, your passion for Rio Salada. Absolutely. The Salt River, to me is the reason we all live in the Phoenix area. We would not have had a city without the Salt River. True. It is our, our heritage and I hope our future. We're gonna roll that tape because uh, we'll take a little detour here because this, and you, and you look at this, it, this has been a magnificent thing for Tempe. You would like to see it extended much further. How far do you think we could go with this kind of development heading west and maybe even east? So I hope to work with our neighboring cities and tribal communities. John McCain envisioned a project that was 58 miles. They talked about this back in the 60s, this was talked about. Water in the desert inspires people. You've seen what it's ha done for Tempe. It took what used to be landfills and turned it into Class A office space. The most sought after companies want to be in that area. It has a great combination with the university, mm -hmm. light rail, the waterfront. People want to be part of that. We would not have a lake the entire stretch in Phoenix. It is a much larger stretch but I would love to see that reinvestment, flowing water, more green space, housing, employment. How far west do you, do you think it could go reasonably? There's huge enthusiasm from the Hill River Indian community. Mayor Meck in Buckeye had a terrible health challenge and he showed up to meet with Cindy McCain to launch this project. We're we looking is... at maybe 10, 20 miles. Could, I mean, how far could we really legitimately do this? So we're looking at different ways to do it. Should we do it in stages where each city has one central project? We would love to get the federal government involved in doing a great regional partnership, and we're moving forward with that now. Uh, 
our federal delegation is working across party lines to try to put this on the map. And, and not to mention, um, and people don't think about it, when mm -hmm. you've got that Tempe Town Lake, that body of water, that's also recharging groundwater. It is recharging it's groundwater. It's a big water. deal mm -hmm. for us. Okay, let's circle back. So you go to, you, you work for Salt River, then you go to Wharton. Is that the, was that the? So I did an executive MBA, so I was working at SRP the entire time, and then weekends going to school. And you meet Pete Buttigieg. So he and I actually went to undergrad together. We were in the same college class. He was very studious, so I want to assure people. This is in Pennsylvania? Uh, or back we went to Harvard At together. Harvard together, okay. Mm -hmm. And, and he ends up moving out to Arizona. I'm not sure people know that Pete Buttigieg has roots here. He was here for a, a time. Yes, so Mayor Pete, his first job after college was in Arizona, living in downtown Phoenix. Doing what? He was the research director for the Arizona Democratic Party for about six months after college. I, I wonder if we, if our paths crossed at some point. I don't, what, what period of time are we talking about? The 2004 election cycle. Okay. Janet Napolitano was, was governor, John Kerry, was running against George Bush. Did you see him as a potential down the line guy who would do what he's doing now, which is running for president? He was incredibly smart and dedicated at the time, very interested in policy. I can't say that I saw him running for president at this age, mm -hmm. but he is a very, very bright guy. You had uh, the state of the state, or state of, pardon me, state of the city. This Please don't week. get me in trouble with Governor Ducey. I know. Okay, so if, as you look at the city of Phoenix, we had uh, Sal DeCicio on last week. He is really concerned about the financial underpinnings of the city of Phoenix. He said we're heading the way of Detroit if we're not careful, Chicago. He said we're on a slower time frame, but our liabilities on pensions and things like that could really put us in a bad spot. Do you see it that way or no? So our city charter requires us to balance a budget every year. We do that. It's important that we think long term. We do have pension obligations that we need to meet. Councilman DeCicio has pr proposed a ballot initiative that has widely fluctuating pension payments. So this year, the ballot initiative outlines a pay payment that would actually be lower than what the city of Phoenix is doing. And then the year before, wildly higher. That uncertainty and that fluctuation is very difficult to have ch huge changes in our budget from year to year. Um, we wouldn't make that higher payment, mm -hmm. which is required by the state. But I think his, his solution is, is not a responsible path forward. He was saying that about 35% or 35 cents on every dollar, the city of Phoenix now is going to pensions and benefits for employees, former employees, must, much of it to the public safety pension. Well, people need to understand we're a service organization. Most of our money goes to people. Police officers, firefighters, the people who are fixing the water system, most of what we do at the city mm -hmm. of Phoenix is people focused. Does it give you concern that more of that discretionary money to spend on people in the city, I'm talking about the citizens, and improving the city gets eaten up by employment costs. It's been a huge challenge with the state legislature and our public safety pension. They manage it and have put generous ben benefits in place without helping us with additional financing It's been poorly managed it in, in spots. The public safety pension for sure. Right. It has one of the poor performance records for their investments. As someone who studied investment management at the University of Pennsylvania, I don't agree with some of the decisions mm -hmm. that they've made in the past. We've had much ris riskier investments than pension experts think is prudent. The solution to that is to really look at those investments and who are making those decisions. I agree with that. The city yeah. just in invested in strong professional support to make sure that we can provide data to the pension board about what they're doing so and, and how it So some of that could turn us. this around, get you on a better trajectory. Right. As you look at the city, I mean, you were on the council for, let's see, you were count, District 8, which Carlos Garcia now has, and he was on the program last week as well. You were District 8 for, I'm trying to remember how long? About five years. So you've seen the city, you, you've identified, I'm sure, what the issues are. What do you think tick off the top three issues facing the city of Phoenix right now that you look at and say, we have got to deal with these three. Infrastructure investment, safety, and making sure we move our economy towards knowledge-based jobs. Where would the homeless situation be in that mix? I mean, we're seeing cities, major cities. Los Angeles comes to mind. San Francisco comes to mind. Grappling with an issue 
that is threatening the quality of life in these cities. Earlier this week, I delivered my first State of the City address. This was something I talked a lot about. We are creating a uh, new citywide leadership position to take all of the city's assets, not just our housing department, and put them full court press to addressing the situation. Uh, we want to lead with services and get individuals experiencing homelessness into the system where we can try to get them stable housing. We're also doing a major initiative to build more affordable housing. And that involves everything from taking advantage of new federal incentives to looking at the city's land ownings. The airport actually owns a significant amount of land along light rail. Has you anybody looked, Mayor, at, I, I, I've wondered, we've got these behemoth um, shopping malls that are kind of out of fashion now. Mm -hmm. Has anybody thought about turning those into a clearinghouse, all services across the board, to try to treat people who are homeless? I do think it's important that we distribute services throughout the community. I also spoke in my State of the City address that other cities need to step up. We should not ask one small part of one city to address what is a very large national and regional issue. So I hope my fellow mayors will make investments in their community. We all receive federal funds to fight poverty. From my perspective, the number one challenge right now is homelessness, and I would love to see more cities prioritizing that. If you've got somebody who's drug addicted or chronically mentally ill, simply getting them into affordable housing, that probably isn't going to solve the problem, right? It Giving is. them shelter if they're, not, if they're not mentally well or they're drug addicted or alcohol addicted. It is so much easier to address those issues if you are in a stable housing situation. And many of the mental behavioral health issues get worse when you have uncertain housing. Um, I had some experience with a loved one returning from Iraq and serving with people who came back to unstable housing situations. For example, in one case, mm -hmm. a relationship ended. Dealing with PTSD is terrible, regardless of where you are, but for that individual and so many others, it was so much worse without a stable housing situation. As we go to break, why do you think your time arrived now to become the mayor of Phoenix? Do you, do you look at it, ever step back philosophically and say, why me, why now? I think we're in a unique time in history where people want elected officials who are experiencing the same challenges. We don't want elected officials on a pedestal. People want... You're a single mom. I mean, you're, mm -hmm. you're going through what a lot of folks out there are dealing with. Right. A generation ago, new moms didn't get elected to office. I went to school during a time when Jane Swift was governor mm -hmm. of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. She became the first governor to give birth. Got a terrible response about whether she could be a mom and an elected official. The world has changed since then, and it seems like people want elected officials who are thinking about the same things that they are. How is that balance? I think it's been wonderful, and it's really helped me bring a fresh set of perspective on terms of challenges like the city's early childhood programs, or even just things like I was the first elected official to give birth at the city of Phoenix and flew with a baby. And as soon as I did that, I knew we needed more spaces for breastfeeding moms at Sky Harbor. <laughs> there you go. Unanimous support to so change that. So your personal experience then mm -hmm. bleeds into public policy as you see a need and something mm -hmm. that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. It's that why we need elected officials from all different ages and backgrounds. You see different problems depending on where you sit. Okay, we're going to take a break here on Newsmaker Saturday. Kate Gallego, the new newly minted mayor of the city of Phoenix, 61st mayor and the youngest mayor of the 10 largest cities in the nation. Back with Kate Gallego, Mayor Gallego, in a moment on Newsmaker Saturday. Back on Newsmaker Saturday with Mayor Kate Gallego, mayor of Phoenix, newly elected. You had to go through this crazy runoff thing. An 18-month campaign, including a five-month runoff. It, it, does, just, does it make sense to you the way this all works, or should there be a better way? It certainly felt like, and I heard from the voters, they were ready for it to have been they over were fatigued. in November. Try running for after the 2018 election cycle, mm -hmm. when Arizona had more TV commercials than any other market right. in the country, and then we kept going over Christmas, Hanukkah. People were not in the mood for more campaigning, but... They stuck with us and voted. Boy, if you think it's bad, think about Martha McSally. You, this I, is a lot of elections going on. I cannot imagine running every two years for six in a row, although I am running once a year every year for the first four years of my son's life. Do you think that we are in a period where people are looking for women to lead? 
It seems like people are looking for results and there have been a lot of women who've been able to deliver that. I think people are more open to different types of leaders. So I, I was frankly worried as a new mom how people would react to that given some of the things I'd lived mm -hmm. through. I mentioned the response to Jane Swift. Mm -hmm. And it seems like we're in an era where that's no longer a concern, that we've seen people with non-traditional backgrounds succeed. And as long as you get results, that's what people care about. I want to run a video. This is, we've got an issue with the police right now and mm -hmm. an alleged um, police excessive force mm -hmm. claim against the city, which is, they're, they're asking for 10 million. I want to take you, we'll just watch this piece and I just want to mm -hmm. get your reaction to it. Take a look. He just seemed like he was trigger happy. Yeah, no he wanted to shoot someone that day. A jarring video of a police confrontation with a young couple is making national headlines tonight over a doll that was mistakenly taken from a nearby family dollar store. In the first minute of the video, officers are seen with guns drawn and a total of 16 expletives are lobbed at the family. They want you to believe that that was a lawful, uh, 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 policy compliant, typical police stop. The family and supporters spoke today as they prepare legal action against the city. They're cowards and bullies and bigots with badges and guns. We got a problem in this city and someone's gonna end up dead. When I tell you to do something, you do it. I am. I'm complying with everything, sir. The officer who initially confronts the family kicks the leg of Ames with him already in handcuffs. 30 seconds later, that same officer returns to confront the mother with her children. It was just crazy, very scary over at a dollar store. And I, I would have I would have bought that dollar if I knew. There was about 12 officers out there, and they all looked at it in disgust at that guy. <laughs> that one guy who was really acting up, they all looked at it in disgust at that guy, the way he was acting, over a Barbie doll. Back with Mayor Kate Gallego. Forget all of the facts of the case. How much are you concerned when something like this comes up, that the entire department gets painted with a broad brush, the statements that Jared Mopp had made? How do you feel about that, and what's your concern? The City of Phoenix Police Department works for our residents. We want our residents to feel confident in the department, feel safe here. We need to have, and have been having, a dialogue about how we can do better. We have a great department, but I want to make sure that we have, we give them the tools to take it to the next level. As a mayor, what do you do in that situation? What is your role? Is it to calm the waters, or what, what is it? We need to have fact-based discussions. We need to hear from all different perspectives so that we can come up with a better solution. You need to have law enforcement at the table with community members. Uh, we're making some big changes at the City of Phoenix. We've had a dramatic change in the way we train officers and I think we've not yet seen the full impact of that. We used to do military style training and now we are doing scenario based training. So putting people out in the types of situations they will face in the real world and giving them experience in a contained environment so that when they're out on the streets, they have the tools. We're also trying to invest in better technology. Uh, we're doing a, body a major recruitment. Now, body cameras are going to be universal. And you think that's a good thing? I do think body cameras are an important tool for transparency. We have officers that are doing wonderful things and officers that need to do better. Do the same with the community. Um, as we, as we, as Phoenix Mayor Greg Stanton departed, he's in Congress now. Should we expect a different tone or tenor or direction from Kate Gallego versus your predecessor? And where would that big turn be? So I have really focused during my time on training and recruitment. I also proposed a new initiative in my State of the City speech this week, which was to embed clinicians with our first responders. For mental health stuff, right? Right. So we, we now know that a growing part of what our police department does is responding to behavioral health calls. Mm -hmm. Thousands and thousands every year. But even beyond that, I'm speaking of just the, the tone of the entire, your, in, your entire approach to being mayor. Should mm -hmm. we expect a real different approach from Greg Stanton? I come from a very different background than Greg did. Uh, Greg was an attorney, longtime resident. I am a Phoenician by choice and come from an economic development background. So I think that perspective 
will result in different perspectives, but I think Greg did a good job as mayor, and I support his accomplishments. Let's take a look, if we can, um, at uh, tape number four. We're dealing with this immigration issue. How much do you think this uh, situation from Central America is affecting us here in Phoenix? Do you think that, are we seeing it on the ground here? Is it putting a strain on social services? Potentially on schools, I don't know. Are you seeing it and are you hearing about it? So I believe that immigration is a federal responsibility and I would love for the federal government to step up and address this issue. We are seeing uh, thousands of people come into our community as part of their efforts to seek asylum. I think less than 10% of them are staying here. They are going to live with sponsors often in other communities such as Los Angeles has been. So they come here major. and then they move on. Right, but it, uh, our churches and social service organizations are hosting them and Can helping them Can we handle this kind of number? It has been a huge stress on these organizations and they say they need more resources here. We also need better communication to understand who is coming and when. Let me use that to circle back to the homeless issue. Um, you know, it's this chicken and egg thing. If you do and provide a lot of services, do you run the risk of being a magnet? for bringing in people who are going to potentially undercut quality of life in the city you're trying to promote and build. So the issue that really has my attention right now is our summer heat. We know in Maricopa County we lost 181 people last year in heat related incidents. With these new individuals coming to our community who may not be familiar with the temperatures and who don't have resources, that safety is our top priority right now and trying to understand who is coming and when what the temperature will be. Uh, let's take a look just briefly, light rail. We've got a big debate on this. It will be on the ballot on August yes. 27th. You believe it should be defeated, this effort to try to curtail expansion Correct. of light rail. You wanna see light rail continue. A no vote on Proposition 104 would allow the light rail to continue to grow and to serve more of our community. I think that's the right decision. You like it, you think light rail is necessary. It has been a huge economic engine for our community. We've seen $11 billion of investment along the light rail system. I was just speaking with Mayor John Giles of Mesa. In their downtown, they went decades without any new building permits. Now, with the light rail coming through, they've seen, I believe he said, more than 1,000. A lot of that's subsidized, though, right? There are, there are incentives for people to build along that line, so government the, incentives. Uh, the state. Republican governors said we want to put uh, state housing tax incentives mm -hmm. along the light rail. Do you worry, uh, Mayor, that, that in the effort to try to build shiny high rises along light rail, that you're displacing your bedrock of people who've lived there and are locals who, who now get kind of kicked out of their own neighborhood? So the reason the state elected to put more affordable housing along light rail is for people who are barely making it if they can avoid the need to have a car, that's more of their dollars they can put into medication, education, basic needs. And so it really helps them get ahead a little bit more. Uh, we do have programs in the city right now as we build light rail to try to make investments, including partnerships with nonprofits to help people stay in their homes and benefit from it. We also have a huge amount of vacant land along the light rail and it's valuable from my perspective to get that land developed. Vacant land doesn't help anyone. We've got about 20 seconds left. What do you want people to take away from what you plan to do as mayor? What, what is it that you would like to say? They're gonna look back and say, I'm glad we voted for her. I'm incredibly optimistic about the future of Phoenix. I'm gonna push to make it a more knowledge economy, jobs that are higher wages and sustainable. I worry about coming economic challenges, and I want to help the city prepare. Good to see you. Wonderful. Mayor, Thanks for having me. Mayor, great to see you. We appreciate it. Mayor Kate Gallego, Mayor of Phoenix. Back in a minute on Newsmaker Saturday. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks again to Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego for being our guest on Newsmaker Saturday, and a happy Father's Day to everybody tomorrow. You can reach me on the social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter. It's easy, John Hook Fox 10. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the program. We'll see you next week on Newsmaker Saturday.